In those eight years, what challenges came up? Oh my gosh, uh, the challenges was, you know, from day one, every part of this, the making of, I think any movies probably, especially a documentary, very challenging uh, for this one in particular because it was so ambitious. Unlike One, one Six Right was ambitious in its own ways and it was my first film, which inherently is just you know ambitious uh, to set out on that path. But with Unlike One Six Right that was shot in one square mile at Van Nuys Airport and just literally the vicinity of Van Nuys Airport, this film was shot all around the world, 95 different places, 18 different countries, all seven continents. And it's actually the first giant screen film or IMAX film to shoot on all seven continents. And for a single one-off film. So Planet Earth actually has shot on seven continents, but that's episodic, 10 or 11 episodes in television. Um, this is just for 47 minutes, we went all around the world to shoot it. So it was incredibly challenging and ambitious with logistics and the planning, uh, the traveling, everything involved, getting in and out of these countries, the different languages, cultures, uh, having uh, interpreters and drivers and permits and just even the equipment alone, getting permission to enter and exit countries with all this expensive equipment. Um, always logistical, um, you know, challenges and just even getting permits to be where we wanted to be alone. So it was months of planning before every single shoot. When we saw you in 2009, you had finished 1-6 right mm -hmm. a few years prior to that. But you were starting this, but that was different because that was sort of your baby. Now you yeah. have more things on the line. How stressful was that? Well, it's always, you know, making movies is stressful, for sure. Um, I, I w was lucky I was making this independently, similar to One Six Right, where um, I was able to create the film sort of in a vacuum, and then at the end, seek distribution with National Geographic. So they weren't involved through the filming of the, or the post-production, it was only at the very end of the film. So I got to make the film I wanted to make, take the time that I wanted to take to make it the way I envisioned it from the beginning and then sought out distribution at the end. So it was a real luxury as a filmmaker to have that opportunity twice now with both of these films. Right. So going back the, in the beginning of the eight years, was that your plan all along to approach someone like National Geographic or was Emirates also one of the sponsors or no? They just happened to, to no, be in the... Okay, no, sorry. They, but they did a great... Uh, they did a great, you know, thing for our, one of our premieres. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. That's yeah. why I wasn't sure if maybe somehow. Okay, and yeah. I think I saw one of the Emirates planes yep. took yep. off. Right. Yeah. Um, so was that your plan? Did you have a list of who you were going to approach once it was finished? I had some ideas yeah, who we were going to approach, and I actually did talk to National Geographic and some others early on in 2000, I think seven, when the idea was just hatching. Um, but I decided against actually going with distribution from the start. Just a strategic choice because. Whenever you have anyone involved, uh, whether they're financing it or, or going to distribute it, you're basically backing into their timeline, you're backing into their um, structure, formula, what it might be, um, and, and you know, basically they're going to be involved in, in some way, maybe a little, maybe a lot, in shaping what you're doing. And it was really important to me because this was an incredibly passionate idea that I had and I wanted to see it all the way through in the purest form possible with a single vision that I had for telling a story about how the airplanes changed the world, which is a really tricky thesis that you can do a thousand different ways, uh, it was really important that that would stay pure. And the only way to do that was, in fact, to be as independent as possible and to have 100% creative control. And it's very difficult, if not impossible, to do that with somebody involved, anybody involved, from the beginning in terms of distribution, because you need to hit the mark that they want you to hit or the mark that you've agreed to hit and you don't have the flexibility inherently to go longer, to make changes, to have the story evolve, potentially become maybe much better, much greater, but it's different, or you're telling it different structurally than, than at one point in time on paper. And it's very difficult to be able to, allow, to be allowed to do that if you have distribution in place from day one. So it's a risk for everybody to do this as basically a spec project, but I've done it twice now and, I, and all has worked out. Brian, I just have to ask because even though eight years, I'm sure you lost a lot of sleep and it was fr frustrating at times, it mm -hmm. sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm pretty envious. So how mm -hmm. are you able to, forgive me for being so nosy, but how are you able to do this over eight years? Yeah, so I learned from One Six Right how important it is in the beginning to make sure to raise enough money that's going to see you through all the way to the very end. So because this film was so ambitious and I knew that we were gonna have an A-list narrator and an A-list composer and shoot all around the world and shoot with the best camera we could get our hands on. Uh, and it was just gonna be an expensive film. 
um, that it was really important to be able to have all the money, not enough money to get started or enough money to get halfway through or enough money to just get through production because I've seen that happen many, many times. And then you never get to finish the film that you started or you find yourself in all sorts of situations where you're compromising, um, cutting corners, this sort of thing. And that's just not in my DNA. It was really important that this realizes the full vision of what I had first thought of you know, in an end product. The only way to do that is to be able to start only when you have all the money secured. And so it took a long time. It took the better part of a couple of years to be able to get that. Um, and then when we finally did, it was 2010, late 2009, early 2010, we were finally in that position. And uh, that's when production got underway.